Do you remember that time when you made an agreement or had a commitment to something and then realized ah, that wasn't a good idea? Or somebody made a promise to you and then they didn't keep it? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you four reasons as to why this new moon in Libra is going to stir up these feelings into the collective and also how it's accelerating people's desires to want to abandon a decaying society. By the way, thanks Pluto 3 Capricorn. Hi, my name is Simon and uh, I use evolutionary astrology to support and empower people in these times of change. Now, before I reveal these four reasons as to why this new moon is going to be so powerful, um, I just want to stop, go back a bit and show you that actually jumping ship is not a bad idea. And actually this up and coming social unrest that we're about to experience is an unavoidable evolutionary pattern. And that the best way to prepare for this is to realize that we are in a huge shift from this is what I'm supposed to be to this is who I am and passionate about. So remember earlier I said to you, you know, how did you feel when you made a commitment to something and then couldn't follow through with it or somebody made a promise to you and they broke it? Well, in our Western societies, we live in a world where deeply embedded in our reality is a response to these agreements, to contracts that we make, to uh, promises that we keep, that we have to keep, that we keep, and we have between each other, and codes of conduct that we orderly run into and agree to in order for us to keep the comforts or the safety and for us to live with a sense of familiarity that everything seems stable. But think about 2019 to 2021. Think about throwing a little bit of chaos into the case and realizing that a lot of these things, a lot of these agreements and codes of conduct and promises that we have are not only outdated, but also we realized that many of them actually didn't reflect a true sense of who we are. It reflected us waking up and doing things because this is what we should do or because of social pressure, we have to do it or the judgment from other people going, this is how this thing works. And if you don't do it, I'm going to feel insecure. And if I feel insecure, then it's your fault, All right? I'm sure many of you have had that conversation before. Well, right now, the evolutionary patterns, the way in which we're moving into is actually forcing so much of this to come to the surface again, thanks Pluto through Capricorn, for us to address and to realize that many of these promises that we make, these agreements that we hold, these ways of keeping things ordered, not only are outdated, but we don't even have the energy for them anymore because we don't even value them. But we're too afraid to jump ship because what exists outside of jumping ship, right? So there's this dynamic tension between freedom to be who I am, to be free, and the sense of familiarity that says, stay with us, keep it all good, keep the peace, make sure that things stay the same, right? I'm sure many of you can relate to that dilemma. And many of you can also relate to the fact that if you break this promise, well, how do I feel if somebody breaks a promise to me? So why would I want to do that for somebody else, right? But I think I'll just self-abandon and, you know, let go of my own interests and my own purpose and my own passions because, you know, I need to keep things ordered. Right now, the energy is literally going to push to the surface and it's unavoidable. You will feel these things come up. You will feel the extremes and the imbalances that are taking place in your life right now. And what are you going to do about it? So let me show you these four reasons as to why this energy right now is going to not only reveal these things to you, but like I said, what can you do about it? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at is this very interesting and sneaky little aspect happening between Saturn and Aquarius, Uranus and Taurus, and the Sun at two degrees of Libra, along with, of course, the Moon, right? Now, there's a little party hanging out over there with the Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Venus, as you can see, but it's the Sun in Libra that's really kind of just saying, hey, I've got something to show you. Now, I said to you there were four things, but really there's only three aspects. The fourth thing is there's a planet in here that's causing a lot of disruption. Now, I know what you're thinking. Many of you are going, it's Uranus, it's Uranus. In actual fact, that's incorrect. There's a planet in these three aspects that 
I want you to guess is actually the main reason that's the troublemaker. It's the one that's causing us this social unrest to come to the case or a people desiring to want to abandon a decaying society. You think you can guess it? All right. So here you have this little sneaky aspect. You notice on the screen, there's 135, 225. What do these things mean? Well, if you look, there is a yod figuration being created between Saturn and the sun and Uranus and the sun. And this aspect is called a sesky squadrate. And what these aspects mean, these sesky quadrates mean, is that they reveal an initiation into social change. It's an aspect that is leading awareness and changing awareness so that we can begin to understand our context in social exchanges. So Saturn is sitting at 135 degrees away from the sun and is what is called a gibbous phase sesky squadrate. And in this aspect over here, Saturn and the sun is saying, hey, there are certain patterns and agreements that you have agreed to that have now become very outdated. And the way you feel this is, oh, the heaviness of agreeing to this contract, this agreeing to this promise that no longer references or gives me any life force. I don't want to get out of it. So Saturn's really sitting there in a curse and saying, hey, I think you should do this other thing. And the sun coming into Libra is saying, hey, I'm going to give you the awareness to understand the relationship between you, this contract, or this promise that you've made, and how you feel about that, Saturn and Aquarius, right? And it can have a binary. Saturn and Aquarius can say, keep with the social rules, or Saturn and Aquarius can say, I want to, I want to change it, right? Then you look at the 225 aspect between Uranus and the Sun. Uranus is coming along in Taurus and saying, hmm, I think I've given humanity enough awareness to say that the value, the context of what is essential, what's important, what do people want to do, what do people want in their lives, what do they value, right? It's bring, Uranus is bringing this to the surface and saying, here, humanity, think about the way that you understand value and structure. And for most people, the value has shifted. The identification with what was important in a society no longer is there. Uranus is literally accelerating our way of seeing life and asking us the question, is this really essential anymore? And it's also saying, this is outdated, this is outdated, this is outdated. Now, the sesky squadrate between the sun and Uranus is bringing this dynamic tension of, okay, well, I'm going to say to this person, you know what, I'm going to leave my job. This is not the contract I want anymore. The promise has been broken. I'm doing all this extra work, but I'm still being paid the same amount of money, rising energy prices, rising gas, rising cost of food, all of these themes, but my wages still stay the same. I don't think I can sustain myself here. This is a tricky spot. And to be honest, I don't really like it anymore. So there's a tendonic tension. Do I want to leave? Do I want to go? Right? And the sun with Uranus is pointing out this dynamic stress of if I do jump, if I do leave, what's on the other side? And that's a scary thing because lots of people feel like doing this, but unafraid to go, you know what? If that person says to me, you're breaking the social contract or you're not breaking, you're breaking the promise or you're creating that instability, you've got to turn around and say, this is not where my life force is anymore. And then you move on. That's what the sun with Uranus is trying to say there, but it's a tension because it's like, what happens if you do that? And on the other side, there's nothing there. You have to trust, right? So the second aspect that is deeply causing social change is this over here. You've got Pluto and Capricorn. Thanks, Pluto through Capricorn. <laughs> and we've got the natural trine to Venus, even though that trine aspect is not actually revealed in this chart over here, 26 degrees of Capricorn and 25 degrees of Virgo, there's a natural trine with Venus hanging out with Mercury. So Venus and Mercury is trining Pluto, bringing up deep feelings and a desire to want to go, hey, this is the social contract. This is my expectations. This is the service and the role that I've played in it. And quite frankly, I feel like it's become outdated. It's no longer useful to me. This is not where I want to put my routine and my time in. And the trine is basically giving the opportunity for people to essentially 
transmute those underlying attachments in them and to say, it's time to move on. Or for big corporations, companies, structures to say, you know what, I need to hold on to this fading structure because everything outside of that fading structure is so scary and I don't know what to do with it and I really love the power, I'm just going to hold on to everything. And so there's a binary here between a complete reinforcement of old structures and the need to fix old structures versus the binary of people waking up to the realization that this is not where they want to put their time and energy and so therefore freeing themselves from it. And that Pluto trine Venus is basically saying, if you want to do this, do it. Now, the opposition between Neptune sitting there, it's got the word full phase there, and Mercury, uh, Mercury Venus is basically saying to us, hey, there's a binary again. In one structure, there is no meaning, the essence has disappeared. And in the other structure, there is an emptiness. And both of them feed in each other. The absence of meaning drives a desire to find meaning. And the opposition here is to try and find where that exists within our social contracts. It's an opposition and it's full phase. So we are learning to rebalance stuff with this opposition between Venus and Mercury. Finally, if you look at the square between Mars and um, Neptune, you will see that this is called a 90 degree square and it's an opening square. And what it again reveals is the way that we think about these contracts, the way that we think about these promises, about the words that are used in these agreements. 30 years ago, when the contract was created, where we live today, the values have shifted, the society has shifted, the importance of our structures have shifted. So now our language structure needs to shift as well. And that is what this energy is creating. So on one level, it's the way that we've communicate to ourselves and the language we use to validate our values. And the square between Neptune and Mars is basically saying, I want to try something new. I don't know what it's like, but I'm also aware that the old no longer works for me anymore. And there's a tension that is taking place. And the third thing that we're going to look at here is this aspect between the Sun, Mercury and Venus. Remember that stellium you saw right at the beginning, hanging out in a party where nobody is invited apart from these four characters because they're so important with the sun there. Well, notice that just before this new moon, the sun had to cross both Venus and Mercury, and so did the moon, right? So when you have conjunctions like this with Mercury and Venus, remembering that Mercury and Venus are the only two planets that orbit the sun in a way that doesn't go 360, right? They, they have a, a certain angle that they orbit the sun with. So when Mercury and Venus are in close proximity with each other, which they usually will be, and also the Sun, you're basically seeing the way that we as human beings identify to Gemini, Mercury, and our value system, in other words, how we relate to ourselves and how we relate to people, how we communicate our value, how we receive value. This is this dynamic here. And so when you see this conjunction, basically you're having a dynamic where our thinking patterns and our value patterns are being released. Old patterns are being released because this is what is called balsamic energy. And at the same time, there is a upstart of new ways of communicating, new ways of thinking, new ways of, of identifying things. So this third aspect is facilitating an intellectual and um, thinking process around how we actually define value in our lives. And this process is accelerating people to say, this no longer works for me anymore. And again, the sun and the moon that just crossed that in Libra says, it has to be balanced. If it's not balanced, it's in extremes. And when things are in extremes, they don't work. So this is about really bringing the balance into the equation. All right, so there's three aspects over there that I've showed you. Have you guessed which one is causing all of the trouble? What's actually triggering this whole thing off? If you said Jupiter, you were correct. Jupiter hanging out there retrograde at three degrees of Aries is in opposition to the sun, to the moon. It's an, it was in opposition to Mercury, and it will be in opposition to Venus at some point. And that Jupiter is sitting right there as a boomerang aspect. It's triggering everything off. We know that Jupiter is about our exploration of truth. It's about our philosophy. It's our inner truth. And it's sitting in Aries saying, hey, we've got a new philosophical pursuit of truth that we want to live by. 
but it's retrograde in Aries. So it says, I'm not really sure what that is. I don't know that uncertainty. And again, because it's opposing everything, it's occurring internally for us. So the social unrest that is, that is occurring is materializing from the inner landscape of people that is then being brought out into the world. And as it gets brought out into the world, the contracts, the agreements, the promises get disrupted because people are no longer agreeing to the things that were once held in agreement. You see it? Right now, and for the next six months, this new moon in Libra is going to deeply impact everybody's lives. And you're going to see the social unrest. You're going to see the way that our landscape is going to change so much because broken promises. People are going to say, hey, you agreed to this, but you're not fulfilling this side. Or, you know, I agreed to this over here, and actually I realized that this is not a good thing and I can't do this anymore. Both of these two dynamics are going to come to the surface, and you're going to see it materialize into the collective, and things are about to change in many ways. So what is changing in your life? Are you noticing these patterns coming to the surface for you? Are you realizing or addressing some of the broken promises or contracts that you've agreed to or attachments that you have that no longer work for you anymore? This new mini Libra is going to bring these things, like I said, to the surface. And if you're looking at these things and asking yourself, I'm reinforcing them because I'm afraid of judgment or I feel guilty because it's going to disrupt that, then you're self-abandoning. And this is a time where the energy is supporting the reinforcement of your value structure and what your time is about and following your passion and at least starting the, the process of self-discovery, then you're going to be supported because going on that road is where the energy is at. All right, so that's what I've got for you guys today. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section um, how this new moon is impacting you. If you want to learn more about how you can work with me personally on a deeper level and be facilitated through these changes, check the description. And finally, if you want to learn more about how Jupiter and Neptune have been deeply impacting our social change, there's a video over here where I explain it in detail.